Welcome back to our YouTube channel. My name is Sydney, where we talk about all things Facebook ads. So if you're watching this video right now, it's probably because you want to learn more and understand the Facebook policies for advertising, become more familiar with the ad review process and the appeal process, and as well as you want to know the types of businesses that can or can't advertise on Facebook and the family of apps, or maybe you're in kind of like the gray area and you're wondering how you can get around that. So we're gonna be going over all of this today and understanding the Facebook ad review process and how you can make it so your ads more often than not are getting approved and not rejected. So today we're actually gonna be diving into the Facebook blueprint. Now everyone actually has access to this e-learning course and you can follow this link if you would prefer to read it, but by doing it yourself, you don't really get anything other than a nice pat on the back. So if you prefer to consume courses in video format, keep watching this video. I'm gonna be breaking down the sections in the description so you can jump to that section, section if you'd like. Otherwise, let's just go through the whole thing together. I'm gonna to try to not take too, too long, but I can't promise anything. We'll be going through it all. So when you first hop into this course, you are gonna to need to log in with your personal Facebook. Now it doesn't matter really whose it is, if you have access to it, that's amazing. And I did find it was a little bit complicated once I was completed the course to actually go back to it. Um, it was a totally different area and view of the course. So I would recommend that if you're going to do it, um, just make sure that you remember it or log into someone else's Facebook ad account so you can do the course again. So this is the Facebook ad policies and review process course. In this lesson, you are going to understand Facebook ad policies, become more familiar with the ad review and appeal process, know what types of businesses can't advertise on Facebook, family of apps and services. This basically just gives you an overview that over 2.2 billion people around the world are using Facebook, Instagram, WhatsApp or Messenger every single day. And you want them to feel safe, that they are welcome into that platform. So they've made these policies and explained what kind of ads are allowed to be run on Facebook and what can't, so that everyone feels like when they come onto those apps, they really are going to be seeing the things that they want to and it's not gonna to be too graphic or sexual or that it's appropriate for all ages. So let's just go through the first question. Is your business a good fit to advertise on Facebook? So before we go any deeper, let's just look at some of the common reasons why ads might not be approved and see if your business is even eligible to advertise on Facebook and its family of apps. So the first question, will your business's ads be promoting adult content that includes pornography, sexual publications, sex toys, strip clubs, gentlemen's clubs, sexual enhancement drugs, and nudity? So answer yes or no to this question. This can be a bit hard, let's say if you are a lingerie company and obviously you're selling um, sexual pieces, but what you're really focusing on is the piece and not so much the sexual activity that goes along with it. So this is sort of a gray area, like I was saying, but there, but there are ways around the review process, even if you are in a lingerie company or selling bathing suits that might show off more skin or more nudity as Facebook would say. But as long as you're not using super inappropriate pictures with, I don't know, girls or men's behinds in very sexually seductive pictures, you're gonna be okay. You might have some ads that are rejected and that you might not really believe that they should be rejected because they're really not that sexually provoking, but you're, these are just things that you're gonna have to work around. So let's just say no for this case. Two, will your business's ads promote or facilitate the sale or consumption of drugs, which can include illegal and recreational drugs, paraphernalia, illegal activities or services? You should not be promoting promoting any of these things with Facebook ads, right? Let's think of like the demographics that are on here. It is supposed to be 18 plus, but there is kids on Facebook and you're going on there to see family and really promoting these things are just not really legal for the most part. And if you are going to be promoting them, you're gonna have to get some sort of license. So just make sure that you're not doing any of this stuff. It's pretty, it's pretty simple. Will your business's ads promote online gambling? Select no if you've been pre-approved after submitting the real money gaming application form found here. So if uh, you're in the online gambling 
industry, you have to fill out a specific form to get permission for Facebook to answer, to uh, advertise. Will your business ads promote the sale of weapons, ammunitions, or explosive? You are not allowed to talk about this kind of stuff and promote this stuff on Facebook. So let's not do it. Let's just see what it says when we press yes. All right. May not be the right fit for your needs. Ads may not promote fire am ammunition, paintball guns, BB guns, fireworks, explosives, pepper spray, knives, tasers, or weapons of any kind, including those used for self-defense. Ads may not directly or indirectly link to landing pages where people can also buy these. So if you have something in your ad that is sort of, you know, let's say you're talking about hunting and animals and your pictures about animals and you're kind of implying that it's for hunting, but you don't really specify it. But then they go to a landing page and that's where you can buy guns for hunting that would not be allowed. It really has to match very closely what exactly you're advertising. So make sure that everything fits perfectly with what you are advertising. Is your business an online pharmacy? Let's see if it says yes. Ads may not promote the online sale or delivery of medication of any kind. So just know that you can't promote medication, right? So you're not allowed to promote the prescription, the use of prescription drugs that have to do with any of these different pharmaceuticals or products. So all of these answers that you were getting if we're pressing yes, you can find them at this link. And then this is where you can go and you can see the different types of industries and people and types of businesses that are able to promote on Facebook ads and those who are not. So all of these answers you will find if you are maybe iffy or you want to say yes to some of them, perhaps, then you can go and find all those answers in um, the Facebook ad policies uh, chart. Is your business a dating or adult friend finder site? Okay, so you do have to be approved by Facebook in order to do that as well. So let's just click no for now. All right, so let's talk about how the ad review process actually works. When you publish ads as part of a new campaign, your ads are submitted for review. This is actually submitted to an AI system. So it's not an actual first a person that is doing the review in the first time. So if it gets rejected, do know that that First rejection is from an AI system, a artificial intelligence that says yes, no, yes, no, matching up specific attributes from your ad, okay? On average, within 24 hours, you'll receive a notification, usually it's less than that, letting you know if your ad is approved. If it's approved, we'll continue running your ad and you can see results in your ads manager. Even though your ad may start delivering, it can be subject to multiple levels of review and later, be disapproved. One example is if your approved ad receives an unusually um, high number of negative feedback, such as people marking your ad as spam or hiding your ad. So Facebook will see, okay, well, this looks like it's a pretty bad ad based on people's feedback. And then they could later on reject your ad. There could also be an instance where the AI system does mess up. So we actually had a client who was promoting tarot tarot card readings and psychic consultations. And the ad had been running for about a month to a month and a half, absolutely no problems. And then all of a sudden, a bunch of ads got disapproved saying that we were promoting the use of alcohol. So in that case, you know, it just went through multiple levels of review and they were just checking up on it. And sometimes the AI system is not correct 100% of the time, right? It's a computer. Computers can make mistakes as well. There can be glitches. And the only thing I had to do for that was just request a manual review and it was actually back up and running. So there, they are subject to mistakes. And if your ad is disapproved and you really feel like it shouldn't have been, like it doesn't violate any of the policies, you can submit a review and most of the time it will be approved again. If your ad wasn't approved, you can usually edit it so it can meet the advertising policies. If it's very clear that your ads did not comply with their policies and you're like, Ugh, I'm gonna try it, but it probably isn't gonna get approved and it doesn't get approved, then you can change your ad. Either the copy, the text, the video, whatever it is. And the AI system is actually getting better. So now it'll tell you what part of the video it does not comply, what part of the text or what option of the text if you're using dynamic creative um, is not going to comply. Another reason it might not be approved is if the landing page um, is leading to a site that is currently under construction. You can choose to edit the ad completely, change the URL, and uh, make sure it's actually going to the right landing page. So make sure you're looking 
you're gonna, get, you're gonna get an email, you're gonna get a notification in your ads manager. What is it that wasn't approved and how can you change it before you request a manual review? And then once you edit your ad, you request a manual review, it will go through, through the review process again. If you feel your ad is wrongly disapproved, you can also click right here and fill out an appeal form. And note that by default, the form will appeal your last disapproved ad. If you'd like to appeal an earlier ad, you'll have the option of providing us with the ad ID. At the bottom of this course, they do have a little reflection just, so, just to make sure you're actually reading it, okay? How will Facebook let you know if your ad has not been approved? Facebook sends you an email to explain why your ad was not approved. That's right. So some of the main takeaways about the review process. Some of the main reasons why your ads would not be approved is because of adult content that are sexually promoting, talking about the things that we mentioned above. The sale or consumption of drugs. If you have a supplement company, again, this is another exception where if you add disclaimers, if you add, if you do not claim that they can cure anything or treat any disease, you can get by the review process, but claiming that it does anything or um, promoting the use of illegal drugs or prescription drugs would not be allowed. Online gambling, unless you fill out a form. The sale of weapons, ammunition, or explosives, that's totally off the radar, you are not allowed to do that. Or the sale of tobacco, which would also be under, I guess, consumption of drugs. Um, also, an online pharmacy, or a dating site may not be approved as well. You have to get permission from Facebook to do so and you might not get approved. So make sure you do that first. On average, within 24 hours, you'll receive a notification letting you know if your ad is approved or if it's not and you'll go in ads manager and you'll actually see the ad or the text or the URL that is not compliant and you can just switch that one. If your Facebook or Instagram ad isn't approved, you'll also receive an email that Facebook and Facebook explain why it was not approved. Another area of Facebook ad review process and policies is the content and the landing pages that your users are going to be seeing and going to. So in this part of the lesson, we're going to recognize what content and user experience is not allowed for destination pages. When you create an ad, please keep in mind these guidelines when you create your content, which includes the ads headline and body text and landing pages as well. The URL for other words, personal characteristics inside of your ad copy. Ads can't assert or imply directly or indirectly that you know a person's personal characteristics. This includes a person's name, race, ethnic origin, sexual orientation, physical or mental disability or medical condition, financial status, and more. You also can't call attention to perceived, perceived, imperfections. I feel like the word perceived is so important because what you might not think is calling out someone's personal attributes because of your own opinion is your perspective and understanding that there's different perspectives for taking a comment and the way that you can interpret something. So perceived imperfections. When these advertising policies like first really came into play and they really started hitting home on, on disapproving and rejecting your ads, this is one of the main areas that we had issues with because I felt like anything that you said that had the word you in it, they would disapprove it and reject my ad because I was asserting their personal characteristics and it was so annoying. So try writing copy that doesn't have the word you was really difficult and over time I've kind of learned that as long as they're not talking about their personal characteristics like are you looking to lose weight? That is you. And that's really talking about who you are as a person and your personal attributes. But if you're asking, what are you doing on the weekend? That has nothing to do with their personal characteristics. And so in that case, it would be approved. And just working out those that wording and knowing that you can use the word you, but in specific situations is really important and something that you'll learn. So let's flip the cards to see what is not acceptable. Not acceptable. Are you Christian? It will be disapproved because it implies the religion of a person. What might be acceptable is meet Christian woman. There's no word you and there's no personal attributes associated with that. Buy this shirt, Greg. This will be disapproved because it implies the knowledge of a person's name. 
One thing that we used to do as a headline tactic was like, Emma ordered one of our cakes for her birthday. Be more like Emma. That's implying someone's personal name and that would not be approved now. Whereas maybe five years ago, it would be. The game has changed completely. So in this, in this case, personalized t-shirts. Buy personalized t-shirts. Personalized t-shirts for, and it could be your whole team and it's your, but you're not talking about their personal attributes. Do not use vulgar language, profane or insulting language. Also make sure all grammar and spelling is correct. Obviously, if you have one tiny little spelling mistake, they're not going to disapprove it. it but if you're writing something like, holy beep, 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 and you're writing like exclamation point, star, exclamation point as the uh, inappropriate word, then that would not be approved. Again, in the Facebook advertising policies sheet, you can go see it by clicking this link here and I will also uh, link that policy page below as well. Do not make any deceptive claims. Your Facebook and Instagram ads can't contain false, fraudulent, or misleading claims or content. Any claims you do make have to be adequately substantiated. Examples of deceptive claims are your get rich quick schemes and any other money making opportunities that offer compensation for little to no investment. I feel like there were so many ads about this just a couple of years ago. Like get rich quick. Oh my God, just invest this and make $10,000 today, $300 per day. You know, those things are not allowed anymore. So this includes multi-level marketing or similar business models that don't fully describe the product or opportunity leading to the advertised income. For your ad to be approved, you must promote complete transparency regarding participation and the business opportunity as these opportunities tend to be frequently reported by people. I feel like people are catching on or have caught on obviously to uh, the fact that people are making these get rich quick schemes. Obviously we want to get money real quick without having to put a lot of work in, but usually it's a scam or they're just trying to get you into uh, paying them money, right? So also note that you can't promote content that's been debunked through a third party fact checking program. So if another part of Facebook's AI system is going through your content and making sure that it's true. If you've seen anything about COVID, they have their own very personalized and uh, pretty extensive AI fact checking program. So any false claims, one, people are probably gonna report you if it's not true, you know, cure cancer, cure diabetes with this you know supplement although it might actually help in lowering blood sugar you cannot claim that it cures it all right let's talk about landing pages landing pages are sites that people are redirected to when they click on your ad any landing page must clearly represent the company product and service or brand that's being advertised in addition to the following above content guidelines so let's look at them right here You can use a Facebook page as your ads landing page, such as your business page or a group, but you cannot direct people to the Facebook homepage. I feel like that's pretty self-explanatory. I don't know why you would want to do that, but if you're starting out, do not bring them right to the Facebook homepage. That's not going to get approved. Also, it has no benefit for you. If you direct people to your page, will review the page's content to make sure it follows their content guidelines. If you would direct people to a Facebook group, it has to be open and public group. It can't be closed or a secret group because obviously they're not gonna be able to see the content on the page. So make sure it's totally open. Geographic IP address restrictions. All apps ads are reviewed from a variety of international locations. So if you're directing people to a website that's restricted to people in certain regions, your ad may not approve, be approved. So if you are in Canada, all the only traffic that you are allowing is from Canada. You do not allow anyone from Australia to come onto your website based on their IP address and where they're located. Your ad will not be approved. Just know that. Error pages. Your landing page must function in all browsers and can't lead people to a site that is under construction or an error page. Obviously, you might not know that it's an error page or that it's a 404 page, but once it does not get approved, you will know. So always make sure that your landing pages are going to the right page. 
This actually might happen if you accidentally type the wrong URL um, and it's bringing to you a bright page that's simply just broken, it's not there. Um, that could be an issue. Or if your page, um, maybe your product is not available anymore or uh, you've taken the page off by accident or on purpose and you're still using that same URL, make sure that your URLs are all good to go. Web of Trust. The landing page linked to your ad must not have been negatively flagged by Web of Trust, a website review service that has no affiliation with Facebook. So they're just using the Web of Trust review process and you can learn more about the, your site's rating and just different sites rating here. There's actually a Chrome plugin. So if you go onto a website, it'll give you the overall score and trustability of that website and people can leave reviews and five star and a star rating, which is kind of cool. But also remember that your landing page must not initiate a download or require an additional program or application to access the content or require people to click through multiple ads to access the page's content. So if you are downloading a PDF or you know it's linking to a PDF that you're giving away, make sure that they don't have to have Adobe Acrobat Premiere Pro version 7 to access that PDF. It should just be plain and simple download. They might have to give your information and then they hit that download button right away. Facebook goes through that, it crawls your website. So make sure that um, your landing page is uh, all good to go. <laughs> Again, make sure it's good to go. Prohibited content, your ad will not be approved if the landing page contains products that are prohibited by the advertising policies and don't apply to those same policies, okay? Misleading ad positioning, such as over-sensationalized headlines and leading people to landing pages that contain minimal original content. If you copied your entire website from someone else to um, try to speed up your landing page process, don't do that. And a majority of unrelated or low quality ad content. The landing page should also include a minimal number of ads, pop-ups, and content blockers. If you bring it to your homepage and you automatically have a pop-up that comes up, one, you can probably leave that running, it's okay, but make sure there's an area that they can click X off of, that they can exit the pop-up very easily and they don't get um, sidetracked by that pop-up. Or secondly, you could also just create a rule that your pop-up does not show up if there is a specific UTM from that link. So, if they're coming from Facebook ads, they will not show because you have a rule set up. What are some landing page guidelines? Well, your ad may not be approved if the landing page content isn't fully functional. If there's buttons that are not working, if there's images that are not showing up. So if it doesn't match, or if it doesn't match the actual product or service being promoted in your ad, or does not fully comply with their advertising policies like we stated above. Make sure it complies, make sure that your website works, make sure that it's easy navigatable and to create a good ad experience keep the following in mind do not direct ads to landing pages with minimal original content or low quality content that's difficult to access that does not distract your landing pages original content with excessive embedded or pop-up ads doesn't bait people into clicking on ads by using overly cropped images or shocking or sexual ad copy so if you zoom into an image um, so that they have, they think that they have to click it to blow it up, like you would if you have posted a regular ad, your full ad is going to show and not just a piece of it. So make sure that it's actually showing the full ad and not just a little piece of it to uh, as bait for them to click it. Do not attempt to monetize Facebook ad views. For example, Facebook ads shouldn't link to a destination page that requires people to click through other ads to access the user's content or use low quality advertisements. Here's a few do's. Do, present content in a clear way that's easy to navigate. Ensure the content on your landing page is relevant to your ad. Directing people to irrelevant content or an unexpected landing page can create confusion and a negative experience. That is the worst one is literally not even related to the same thing. You don't see much of that anymore and that's why you know they would get rejected if that did happen. But I know that in the past, that was a huge issue. This is obviously why they had to create these advertising policies that people weren't doing that anymore because people became very, very skeptical about buying on Facebook and those ads. What are the two policies a business must follow in regards to a landing page destination? Heck
Heck yeah. And then just a few key takeaways, just wrap it up. Ads can't assert or imply directly or indirectly that you know a person's personal characteristics. Ads can't use vulgar, profane, or insulting language. Ads can't contain false, fraudulent, or misleading claims or content. You can use a Facebook page as your ads landing page, such as a business page or a group if it's open, right? Not a closed group. And if it's not, the home page of Facebook. And then of course, with your Facebook ads, you obviously have your creatives, the actual front facing view of your ads. So what kind of policies go along with this and how can you make sure your ads get actually get approved? So in this lesson, you're gonna learn what forms of creatives you can and can't use when advertising on the Facebook family of apps and services. So the first one is to not have any misleading buttons. Images that mislead a person to think your ad features some sort of functionality, whatever, whatever it may be, like a video play button are not allowed, obviously, because it's just clickbait. You're, they're just clicking it without knowing that it's actually an ad and they think this is gonna play something except it brings them to a website. So let's see which one of these would not be acceptable Facebook and Instagram ads. Uh, this one and also this one. This one has a huge button here and so does this one. Exactly. Image one suggests a video capability yet it does not actually play a video. And image two suggests a button when there's no actual call to button action there. All right. Health and fitness. This is a huge one and it can be super confusing. Um, for a lot of different reasons, you know, making claims, uh, talking about personal attributes, like losing weight or their personal goals. Obviously that's very, very personal, a personal characteristic, but you cannot use any before and after images, unfortunately. So this would actually not be allowed as well as any images that of, that are unexpected or unlikely to happen as results, right? Like dropped 50 pounds in seven days, although it could be possible. It's just really, it's not healthy, first of all, and it's just unrealistic, right? So an example would be a side-by-side -side image comparison showing dramatic weight loss. I just said that. Which of these images would not be accepted in the ad? It would most likely be this one. This one here, like they'll say it here, is like they're actually just smiling, so that would be allowed. All right, so this is for those bathing suit companies, those uh, maybe sexual health promoters for women's health, men's health. What can you promote and what can you promote? No ad can be used that is overly sexual, implies nudity, shows excessive amounts of skin or cleavage, or focuses unnecessarily on body parts, even if it's portrayed for artistic or educational reasons. So if you have a painting of a statue and his junk is showing, that would not be allowed because, well, most likely, unless they knew it was a statue, but most likely it would not be approved because of the private part that's showing. These ones here, which of these images would, would be accepted in a Facebook or Instagram ad? Well, that's pretty sexually seductive. Uh, this is obviously, um, they're in bed, so not this one. I would click neither. Now, this can actually be a little bit confusing for a lingerie brand, swimsuit brand, clothing company who might show off a little bit extra skin. There's some ads that might be approved and some that may not. A lot of it will come down to the way that the female or the male is positioned, um, like where are their hands, what are they really like, pointing out and showing off the most um, and what is it suggesting okay so these are like really areas that might be a little bit confusing and uh, it really just takes some learning to understand what can and cannot be accepted shock and scare tactics images that are scary gory or sensationalized aren't allowed so if you're going on facebook and you see the this video has been hidden and then you have to press that c video or the why was this hidden obviously that would not be approved it's just showing off something that is sensationalized is very maybe scary or inappropriate right we don't allow these images because they may shock or elicit a negative response from your audience you're probably watching those kind of videos like this oh you know and there's a, there's a reason why they're not allowed to promote that because they don't want to give off that kind of feeling we want to have a, we want to have a happy um good time while you're on the facebook and instagram platform so make sure that it doesn't do this look like this it would not be allowed. That is like, it looks like someone just crashed. And although it might be 
promoting car insurance or I don't know, life insurance. Make sure that if this happens to you, you have your life insurance. It's just, it's just negative. Okay. And this one as well, that could be scary. So I would choose neither. Your ad can't contain an altered or outdated version of the Facebook or Instagram logos or use trademarks, names, domain names, logos, or other content that imitates or could be confused with Facebook. Also, by using the logo, you shouldn't be implying a partnership with Facebook. Which of these images would not be acceptable in an ad on the Facebook family of apps and services? Okay, your ad can't contain an altered, oh, okay. So you can use any, except for two and three. So this one here and this one, you cannot use. Image two is an altered version of our official logo because it was changed to appear red. Image three isn't allowed because it's an outdated version of our actual logo. The rest of the logos and brand assets are okay to use in your ads, so long as you don't use a logo to imply a partnership with Facebook or Instagram. Gotcha. Well, there we go. Text add-on images. Now this is actually a little bit different. I know that a while ago they did mention that the 20% text rule was no longer in effect. So this Facebook course blueprint might be a little bit outdated, but it's still a good general rule of thumb. When you use images, try to include as little text as possible, right? It's an image, it's not, it's not a graphic, right? You wanna be as native to the platform as possible. So we recommend that the text compromises no more than 20% of image area. Ads with higher amounts of text will receive less or no delivery as a penalty. So it may be approved, but it may not receive that much delivery. For any text you use in your ads, we recommend that you include it in the post rather than in the image, right? Include it in the copy, not in the image. Please use a text overlay tool found here and you can upload your image and it'll tell you if it's good or not. But I actually don't use that anymore. We've actually run ads that have way more than 20% text and it's still performed really well. So this section, I probably wouldn't um, take it uh, too much to heart because they did change that rule. Okay, so, you know, this one doesn't contain any text. This one, you know, it's a little bit... Um, more text, so you might reach fewer people. This one has even more text, and this one has a lot of text, so do not use any images like this, as well as that just makes it look like you edited it a lot, so um, it doesn't really look native. It doesn't look like one of your friends just posted it, right? So um, it can be flagged or just not reach any impressions at all because it looks so edited. All right, which image would be considered exceptions and are not subject to reduced delivery on Facebook or Instagram? I would say all of these. Yeah, all three images because it's actually part of the image and not extra text that you added on there. Images that are zoomed in on logos or images with text overlays like the image below won't be considered an exception because that's mostly just text. Even that, even if it's a zoom in of the image. So what health and fitness images are not allowed in ads across the family Facebook of uh, apps and services, any image that shows a side-by-side -side comparison showing dramatic weight loss. You're right, thank you. All right, so key takeaways, just to wrap this all up. You should be mindful of ad policies for misleading buttons, health and fitness before and after images, sexually suggestive images, shock and scare tactics, brand assets from Facebook and Instagram, and text penalties. Uh, following the 20% rule. And then the final part of your Facebook ad review process is your targeting. Who actually is going to be seeing your ads? So in this lesson, let's become familiar with targeting restrictions for ads on alcohol. Obviously there's an age restriction on that. Financial services, health and fitness, and also dating. And you also learn to be aware of the non-discrimination policies for ad targeting. Again, really the, the point of Facebook and all these advertising policies, although they can be confusing and they can get your ads disapproved or rejected and it can be annoying is that they're trying to create a safe place for everyone to go to and whether you're running ads for your little brick and mortar business or for a multi-million dollar company everyone should have an equal chance and they've set these rules in place so that everyone is complying so the first one is alcohol advertisers promoting alcohol in their ads must follow all applicable laws, regulations, and industry codes in the respective countries. If you're targeting multiple countries in the same ad set, 
please target the highest age. So for example, if you're targeting people in Canada and Sweden, you must target people who are 25 and older. Even though in Canada, we have an age limit of uh, 19 in most of the provinces and 18 in some of them, in Sweden, it's different. So you have to target the oldest age group. To ensure proper targeting, if you target an age group that's outside of these legal directives, they'll automatically set the minimum age to the legally approved limit for the specific country or state and then approve the ad. So they'll automatically set that age limit if you don't choose it, but do choose it automatically because that could slow down your review process. If you're promoting health and fitness products or services, including your vitamins and supplements, you must always be targeting 18 plus. Um, and make sure that none of your ad copy or your text or your images actually target people who are younger than 18. Okay, so do not talk about how you're 13 and you should be going uh, to this gym, you know, 13 and over. It, it's targeting people who are 18 and over and making sure that all of your tax complies with that. As well as financial services, the promotion of credit card applications for accredited institutions, for example, large banks, TD, RBC, um, loans, and other bank-related activities can only be targeted for people 18 and older. Okay, so again, it's sort of the same concept um, and make sure that the landing pages for these ads include the proper disclosure for APR, uh, transaction fees, and any other related information. Just like if you're making a supplement company, you have to say, you know, this does not cure anything. We're not, we are not a doctor. Make sure you contact your healthcare provider. You also have to do this with your fan financial um, ads. If you've been approved by Facebook to have your dating app or your site on Facebook, you also have to follow the instructions when building your audience. So with targeting, these requirements must be met in order for your dating ads to be approved, okay? You'll need to create separate ads in order to target both men and then women. Ads targeted to France will not have the ability to be targeted by sexual preference. Dating ads targeted to this country must abide by all other policies. So if you want to learn more about this, you can just pause this video and, and follow this, um, this information. But because of rules and regulations set out in these specific countries, you will not be able to uh, target them based on some specific areas like, like their sexual preferences, okay? So make sure you're, making sure you're keeping it open. We want Facebook to be a safe place, so there's no discrimination allowed. Their advertising pro policies prohibit advertisers from using their ads or products to discriminate against individuals or groups of people. Ads are discriminatory when they deny opportunities to individuals or groups of people based on their personal attributes like their race, ethnicity, or national origin, all of these different things here. You cannot either exclude them or call them out. Okay, so you might have some products that are mainly just for women. For example, women's clothing. Okay, that is not a discrimination. You're not saying, hey men, you're not allowed to do this. And honestly, if men want to wear it, they could right? But you cannot discriminate against that group. Um, although you can target them specifically, there are some exceptions to when you can use that targeting and you cannot. But you have to make sure that you're always following the non-discrimination policy. You can learn more about it there and it's also in their Facebook ad policy page because um, they want to make sure they're maintaining that integrity and that people feel safe and they're not going to be discriminated against because obviously that can stir up some really negative emotions. And finally, for the housing, employment, and credit advertising, they're doing even more to protect against discrimination. So anyone who wants to run housing, employment, or credit ads will not be allowed to target by age, gender, or zip code, which makes it a little bit difficult. There's are, there are way, ways around it. Um, for example, creating a special audience or a special category for those specific people in your ads manager. Um, you can do that, but you can't target postal codes directly to only target one area. They'll also have a much smaller set of targeting categories to use in their campaigns overall, because again, they want to protect against discrimination and not only target people who make under a certain income or target people who make over a certain income in this specific area because it's just not fair and they don't want that to happen. And finally, also have already built a tool for you to 
uh, view all of the housing, credit, employment, and even political ads that are being shown, regardless of if they're actually being shown to you. And you can check those all out in ads library that's provided by Facebook, as well as honestly any other advertisers. This is a main um, tool that we're using for market research and seeing what ads are our competitors running so we can run ads that are similar. So knowledge check, a little quiz that they have at the end. A business is promoting alcohol in their ads. What should they do if they want to target multiple countries with different age limits? They should set the age limit to the highest age that is allowed among all the countries that they are targeting, right? So, you know, 25 for Sweden, 19 for Canada, they choose 25. Now, one thing that I forgot to mention is that at the end of each lessons, make sure that you do press that complete button if you're doing it on your own time. Um, although again, like I said, you don't get anything for it other than a nice little uh, pat on the back or a good job. You don't get any sort of badge from Facebook and um, that's not something that you can add to your like business profile or anything really. So, so there's four main things that we went over in this little mini course. The first is the Facebook ad policies and review process. The second is your actual content and the landing pages and what you can and can't advertise what creatives you can and can't be using to make sure that you do get approved, as well as targeting and some limitations that certain industries have. These are all super, super important. And, and you're probably seeing more and more ads being rejected and you getting frustrated. Maybe your entire account was banned. And I know it can be annoying, but really what this all is doing is really making sure that Facebook keeps that safe environment and make sure that everyone feels welcome. No one's being discriminated against and they're not being promoted. Things that just are very scammy, spammy, and just not fun to look at. So make sure you're following all of these ad policies to increase your chances of actually getting approved uh, when you actually run ads there's nothing more annoying than it not getting approved. So always make sure you keep in close tabs on these, write some notes down when they do get approved, when I don't get approved, keep a swipe file of the things that worked and didn't so that you are constantly learning. So I hope you enjoyed this video. I know it was a little bit long, but I, I know that this little mini course definitely helped me out as well as constantly reading those advertising policies and Facebook lays it out very plain and simple. So if you liked it, give it a thumbs up, subscribe to our channel if you found this valuable and we will see you in the next video.